the stars in the sky, I look up to you. You hold our universe in the palm of your hand, yet you know where I am. You reach out to me. You high, no one's above you. I lift you high, no one is like you. You are the Almighty God. You ain't let the mountains rejoice, you're alive. The wind carries your voice, you are here. And the world longs to see you. The nations bow down to you.
Pastor Prelo, the pastor of Christ United Methodist Church in Baltimore City. And I want to thank you. We here at Christ United Methodist Church want to thank you for worshiping with us this morning virtually. We thank God for the many ways in which God has allowed us to worship in this season during this pandemic. We just thank God for just modern technology and our ability to just use modern technology to spread God's word and to worship with each other. So we thank you whether you're worshiping with us on Facebook, you you are watching us on YouTube, you are joining us on, on Zoom. We thank God for the many ways in which God has allowed us to worship together. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, there is God in the midst. So I just thank God for God's presence being with us this morning. I just thank God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together for the Lord is good and his mercy endureth through all generation. I pray God, I pray this morning that something that's said, that's a song that's sung, I pray that you will be touched this morning by this worship service. I'm going to invite Pastor Wayne, our musician, to come and lead us in worship. Praise everyone. It's just great to have you join us as a time of worship. Amen. I want to give God praise. Wherever you are, just lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your, your mercy, your goodness, your faithfulness. God is faithful. Amen. Come on. We're going to say yes to our Lord.
worship Him. Put your heart so I just worship Him. Thank you for another day allowing us to wake up and to experience your grace and your mercies lord i thank you for loving us for who we are lord please watch over us as we go about our days and our week and our month and our year and lord i pray that you just put your hands of protection over us lord i thank you for each family and friend who's listening to this i pray that you bless their lives in jesus precious name i pray amen Again, we just want to thank you for being with us this morning at Christ United Methodist Church. We just want to thank you um, for that. It is given time. It is time for us to give back to God a portion of that which God has graciously and extravagantly blessed us with. We here at Christ United Methodist Church, we want to first thank you for what you have already given to this ministry. And we want to thank you for just sowing a seed into this ministry. And we thank God because ministry still goes on. We thank God for our outreach ministry that's still out in the community and making that impact for the kingdom of God. Here at Christ United Methodist Church, there is four ways in which you can give. You can go to our website at www. Christ UMC 21213.org. That's www.christumc 21213.org. You can also download the app Givelify. You can download the app Givelify on your smartphone and look for Christ United Methodist Church, Baltimore City. You can also text to give. You can text the word give. That's G I V E. 2-410-632-6452. Again, text the word GIVE to 410-632-6452. And also, there is still snail mail. You can still use mail. You can um, mail your check to 2005 East Chase Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 212 one three. That's Christ United Methodist Church, 2005 East Chase Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21213. And you can write your checks out to Christ United Methodist Church. We thank you already for your giving. Let us pray. God, we just thank you, God, for the many gifts in which you have already given us. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus. We here at Christ United Methodist Church that we will be good stewards over that which you have trusted in our hands. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Say thanks for 
that prepares our heart for God's word. It is preaching time and the word of God will come from John the 15th chapter. That's John the 15th chapter verses 1, 3, 1 through 5. Again, that's John the 15th chapter verse 1 through 5. And so the word of God reads as this. 
I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. That's John, the 15th chapter, verse one through five. Amen. Let us pray. Um, God, it's in your name that we pray. We thank you, God, just for the opportunity to hear your word this morning. God, open our eyes that we may see you. Open our ears that we may hear you and open our hearts that we may have an encounter with you this morning. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen, my brothers and sisters. As I said, the word of God is going to come from John, the 15th chapter, verse 1 through 5. And the topic, our focus this morning is stay connected. Our focus this morning is stay connected. Today, we are in the 15th chapter of the book of John. In this text, we are invited to one of the seven I am sayings of Jesus in this book. Each of them speaks to who Jesus is. They reveal Jesus's identity to us. They speak to an aspect of Jesus' ministry to the world. They remind us of the revealed name of God in Exodus, the third chapter and the 14th verse. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. This I am statement in Exodus introduces the Israelites to God. It encompasses all of who God is. God is infinite and he is sovereign over our lives. He is who he is. Just as the I am statements in the I am statement in Exodus expresses God's relationship to the Israelites. These I am statements in the book of John expresses Jesus' relationship to humanity. In some way, they invite us into relationship with Jesus. In John, the sixth chapter, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And John, the eighth chapter, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light light of life. And John, the 10th chapter, Jesus said, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. Again, in that same chapter, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd, lay, shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. In the 11th chapter, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And John, the 14th chapter, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except 
through me. In John the 15th chapter, the text we are invited to today, Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. My brothers and sisters, as Jesus' mission on earth was coming to a climax, Jesus spoke a word of encouragement to the disciples in the previous chapter. Jesus said, let chapter, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus also promised the disciples that once he was gone, he will send them help in the person of the Holy Spirit. He will not leave them comfortless. Then in, ch in, 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 in chapter 15, he speaks about how connected they are to him and why it is important that they be connected to him. Jesus said, I am the true vine. I am genuine. I am loyal. I am trustworthy. I am faithful. I am the true vine. My brothers and sisters, it was not unusual for Jesus to use something that the people could identify with. In all of these I am sayings, Jesus used a metaphor the people could identify with. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. And when we look at Jesus' statement and Jesus said, I am the true vine, my brothers and sisters, vines were everywhere in ancient Israel, mentioned more than any other plant in the entire Bible, the grapevine was very important culturally and economically in biblical times. Because of its sensuality in everyday life, it is often used symbolically in scripture. A fruitful vine was a symbol of obedient Israel while, while wild grapes or an empty vine spoke of Israel's disappointment. So here Jesus uses the metaphor of the vine to speak of our connection between him and God. Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes. Jesus, my brothers and sisters, is the vine God is the gardener and God's people are the branches. If any of you know anything about gardening, the vine needs the gardener and the branch cannot live apart from the vine. The branches cannot live. The branches cannot produce. The branches cannot be productive without being connected to the vine. The branches need the vine. The branches need what the vine has to offer. The offer. The branches cannot produce. The branches cannot grow. The branches cannot survive apart from the vine. Disconnected from the vine, the branches ceases to live. The vine is the source of life 
for the branch. The branches are only fruitful when connected to the life-giving source of the vine. My brothers and sisters, Jesus was teaching the disciples the importance of staying connected to him. He was teaching the disciples that being connected to him is beneficial to their growth. Being connected to him was beneficial to their lives. Being connected to him was beneficial to their very being. It was beneficial to who they are. It was beneficial to what they were going to do. It was beneficial for their growth. Being connected to Jesus was their survival. If they were going to survive when, if if they were going to survive, they had to remember that they needed to stay connected to Jesus. Being connected to Jesus was beneficial to their very being. My brothers and sisters, when we first went into social distance, I remember that I welcomed the time to step back from our everyday lives. Everything was coming to a halt. It was forcing us to slow down. And I don't know about you, but I welcome times in my life that causes me to slow down. Being a person that knows what it feels like to overextend oneself, I welcome times to slow down. Therefore, I welcomed social distancing. Actually, I had no problem with our stay at home order. Order. I saw it coming in February. I was following the news and knew that we were headed towards a stay at home order in Maryland. I was following the news and knew that this was the direction in which we were going. However, I got to be honest with you that about the end of April, after being in the house for about a month and a half, I began to feel like something was missing. My husband and I were busy in separate parts of the house during the day, getting our work done. And we would congregate in the family room in the evening after dinner time. That had become our daily routine. However, as I, as I said, in about a month and a half into the stay at home order, order, I began to feel like something was missing. I started to feel disconnected. I started to feel disconnected from the church. I started to feel disconnected from my family. I I, I needed physical interaction. I had not seen my mom, my daughter, and my grandkids going on two months. I felt disconnected from the church. I don't know about you, but something happens when the saints come together for corporate worship. Something happens when two or three are gathered in Jesus name. Something happens when we are all in one place on one accord. I started to feel disconnected from those things that bring value to my life. I don't know about you, but I was feeling a little disconnected after, after we were going into about two months, something was happening in my spirit. I was feeling a little disconnected. You know, I, I spoke to my family on the phone and I spoke to some of the saints on the phone. However, something was missing. I felt disconnected. So I started looking for creative ways to connect to the family. I started to looking for creative ways to connect to the church. I tried, I, I, I tried to get my mom to connect on Zoom, but we were unsuccessful. I, 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 I I needed to see her. I needed, I, I, I couldn't physically get to her, but I needed to connect to her. I drove past my daughter's house and waved to my grandkids from the car. I tried to find creative ways to connect to the family. I don't know about you, but I take this social distancing thing serious. Uh, too many lives are at stake. So I try to find creative ways to connect to the family. How could I distance myself, uh, but, but stay connected to the things that add value to my life? I was feeling a little disconnected as we went on. I, 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 you know, a phone call just wasn't going to do anymore. Um, 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 you know, 
Zoom just wasn't getting it for me. I needed to, to physically see some people. I was feeling a little disconnected. So this made me think as I was feeling disconnected from my family, how many of us are feeling disconnected? How many of us are feeling disconnected from our family? How many of you are feeling disconnected from the church? How many of you are feeling disconnected from God? Disconnected from those things that add value to your life. This pandemic is having an impact on all of us. It's having an impact on us physically it's having an impact on us mentally and it's having an impact on us spiritually physically people are not moving around as they normally do because we are home more we are sitting down more looking at television more on the computer more we are not as active as we used to be we are not showing up at each other homes. We, we, we can't hang out at the movies on Friday night. We're not hanging out at the mall as we normally do. Saturday window shopping is gone. We're not sitting in restaurants on Sunday. Uh, on, on Sundays, summer vacations are limited. All of this has caused us to feel disconnected from each other. Physically, it's taking a toll on us. I, I, I can't help but think how this is having an impact on us. Not only physically, but what about the mental toll it's having on us? Mentally, people are having a hard time. You can see it all around us. You can hear it in our conversations. You can see it on our faces. Our minds are on overdrive. People, pe people who are dealing with depression and panic attacks and anxiety attacks and any other mental illnesses before the pandemic is finding it difficult to cope in the midst of it all. There are people who live by themselves and this has caused them to feel even more isolated from their friends and family and mentally they are having a hard time. The CDC has reported that the stress of the pandemic has caused people to fear and worry about their health and the health of their loved ones. People are concerned about their financial stability and the stability of their job. It has caused changes in our sleep patterns and changes in our eating patterns. People are having problems with sleeping and problems constantly concentrating people my brothers and sisters with chronic health problems are seeing their health decline. Mental health conditions are worsening. There is an increase. There, there, there is an increase in the use of tobacco and alcohol and other substances. People are having a hard time being disconnected from each other. And my brothers and sisters, not only physically are we having a problem, not only mentally are we having a problem, but it's even taking a toll on us spiritually. With today being Friends and Family Day at Christ United Methodist Church, a day where we normally invite our family to church and invite our friends to church. We are forced to invite them to a Zoom call, disconnected from each other, fellowshipping on Zoom, trying to find connection in the midst of being disconnected from one another. We don't understand that although we're not in the building, we are still the church. We are still the body of Christ. Churches are trying, and let me tell you, they're trying hard to find creative ways to produce a meaningful worship service 
And I wonder if all of this, if all of this is producing a change in our lives. Ah, church, and beginning to wonder if it's really producing a change in our lives. Spiritually, it's having an impact on us. And I'm not sure if it's having a good impact on us. We will never know until we are six months and one year removed and two years removed from the pandemic, the impact that it has had on us spiritually. My brothers and sisters, retreat centers and camping centers that are normally open, places where we can find respite are closed due to the pandemic. Spiritually, the foundation of our human existence is threatened. People are questioning their faith, leaning into psychic readers, relying on tarot cards to tell us our future. I had never seen so many people predict the future in my life. We are disconnected and I can't help but think that maybe part of our disconnect we are feeling is because in the midst of it all, we have also disconnected ourselves from God. In the midst of disconnecting from everything, we have disconnected from God. My brothers and sisters, I can't help but wonder the impact of all this, this, all, all, all of this. I can't help but wondering the impact that is having on us spiritually. I can't help but think that maybe part of this disconnect we are feeling is because in the midst of it all, we have also disconnected ourselves from God. Jesus said, I am the true vine. Jesus was letting us know that, letting us know that Jesus is the source of our strength. Jesus said, remain in me and I, I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. What Jesus was saying, the only way that you can be productive is you have to stay connected to me. The only way that you can grow, you have to stay connected to me. See, my brothers and sisters, in the season that calls for disconnection, one connection that must be maintained, one connection that must be kept, and that is our connection to God. You're connection with God can't stand a pause. Your connection with God can't stand an interruption. Your connection with God can't stand a commercial break. Your connection with God can't stand to be continued. Your connection with God can't stop. It can't slow down because of a pandemic. Your connection with God can't stand a stay-at-home order. Your connection with God can't stand to be social distance. We can't distance ourselves from God in the midst of distancing ourselves from everything else. The one thing, church, that we need to stay connected to, and that is God. We need to stay connected to God. Your connection with God can't stand a stay at home order. I want to let you know and I want to say, aren't you glad that God does not have a stay at home order? Aren't you glad that God neither slumbers nor sleep? There are benefits to being connected to God. You sleep better when you're connected to God. You have a peace that surpasses all understanding when you're connected to God. There are benefits to being connected to God. With God weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. With God, they tell me trouble don't last always. With God, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Check this out. The weapons might form and the weapons might come, but with God, no weapons formed against us shall prosper with God I might be down but God will pick me up there are benefits to being connected to God when I'm in the valley God is there when I'm in despair God is there when I'm down God is there there are benefits to being connected to God and all of our 
water in our midnight experiences. When we go through the valley, he's right, he's right there with us. When we walk through the waters, he's right there with us. When we go through our hard times, he's right there with us. In depression, he's right there with you. In anxiety, he's right there with you. No matter what it is that you're going through, I'm so glad, church, that God said that he would never leave us or forsake us. I'm so glad, church, that we serve a God that's a present help in the time of need. I'm so glad, church, that we serve a God that's right there with us. I'm so glad that we serve a God that will rock us in the midnight hour. I'm so glad that, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Why? Because God. God is right there with me. I'm so glad, church, that we serve a God that that, that sits high and look low. I'm so glad, church, that we serve a God that is a God that is bigger than a pandemic. I'm so glad that we serve a God that's bigger than any sickness that we might go through. I'm so glad that we serve a God who's a mind regulator and a heart fixer. I'm so glad that we serve a God. I'm so glad that we serve a God that says that he will never leave us or forsake us. God will never leave us or forsake us no matter what it is that we go through and no matter what we find ourselves and we serve a God that's right there with us in the midst of it. No matter where you find yourself, we serve a God that's right there with us. If, if, if this morning you're feeling a little disconnected, disconnected from your family, disconnected from the church, Physically disconnected, mentally disconnected, spiritually disconnected. If that's you this morning, I want to say to you, though you might feel a little disconnected, guess what? God is always connected to you. God is always connected to you. Of all the things that we have disconnect from in this season. We can't afford to be disconnected from God. Jesus said that I am the true vine. I am the true vine. I am the true vine. The authentic vine. Jesus said I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit he prunes. So that it would be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me Jesus said as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. If we are going to be, or or, or if we're going to survive this season, we have to stay, stay connected to God. We can't afford in this season to back down. We can't afford in this season to let our relationship with God Go. We can't afford in this season to turn to the right and to turn to the left. Now is not the time for you to disconnect from God. If we ever needed God in our lives, we need God now. My brothers and sisters, stay connected to God. And, 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 and if you are on our Zoom call, if you're joining us through YouTube or, or you're looking at us on Facebook, I want to say to you, and if you're not connected to God, I want to say now is the time to connect. 
The source of your strength comes from God. The source of, uh, of your very being comes from God. You are here only because of God's grace and God's mercy. You might not recognize it, but guess what? God is already operating in your life, in your life. So if that's you this morning, you feeling a little disconnected. Maybe it's because you're not connected to God. So I want to invite you this morning at this time. I want to invite you to connect with God. I just want to have prayer this morning. If that's you this morning, you're feeling a little disconnected. I want to invite you to connect. If you're already in the body of Christ, I want you to connect. I want you to move a little closer to God. If if you're not in the body of Christ, I want to invite you into the fold. If, If we're going to get through this, we need God to help us through what it is that we're going through. Now is your time to connect to God. Now is your time to connect to God. I want to invite you. Let us have a word of prayer. God, it's in your name that we come this morning. God, we come to Heavenly Father as humble as we know how. We come God, asking you, God. We we, we come, God, asking you for your strength. We ask you, God, in the name of Jesus. We ask you for your power. We ask you for your might. We're feeling a little disconnected this morning and we need to draw just a little closer to you. We realize that we can't get through this by ourselves. We're feeling a little disconnected from our family. We're we're, we're feeling physically disconnected from our family. We're feeling um, 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 mentally disconnected. Some of us are feeling mentally disconnected. We have some things that's going on in our mind, God, and some of us are spiritually, we're we're, we're feeling spiritually disconnected, and and, and we pray, God, and we realize this morning that that we need you, God. We need just a little touch from you. We need and, and all the things that we need and all the connections that we need, we realize that we need a connection with you. Because we realize, God, that, 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 that it is you who is the source of our strength. It, it, it is you, God, in the name of Jesus, that, that, that is the very essence of who we are. So I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, touch your people under the sound of my voice. God, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, touch us this morning, God. God, that we may feel just a little closer to you. And God, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God, if there's somebody under the sound of my voice and God, they just don't know you. They don't have a relationship with you. God, I pray for that person. I pray that they will yield, God, to your spirit this morning. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus and all the things that they're trying to connect to in this season, God, I pray, God, that they will find a connection to you this morning. God, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God, touch them, prick their hearts this morning, God, that they might come crying out, what must I I do to be saved? What must I do to connect to God? God, your word teaches us in Jesus said that he is divine and you are the gardener, which lets us know, God, that that the the branch got to go through the vine, God, to get to the gardener. God, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, touch your people in a real way in an awesome way. We thank you, God, and we bless your name. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. 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 I pray, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that this morning that you found your connection with God. I pray in the name of Jesus there's somebody who joined us this morning, whether it was on Zoom Virtually, you joined us this morning. And, 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 and as I was praying, you began to say, God, I need that connection with you. If that was you and you, you wasn't, you're, you're not part of the body of Christ. You, you joined us and you say, you know, I want that connection with God. If that is you, if that's you, what I want to say is you can always, I, I want you to put it down in the comments. I want you to inbox us. I want you to call us at Christ United Methodist Church, 410-732-5600.
I want you to um, connect to us. If that was you and you say, I need, I, I need a church home. I, 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 I want to connect with God. I, I feel that connection this morning and I want to connect to God. I want you to inbox us, you know, put your number down in, in you know, your email address down in the comments. We will put our email address down there. You can, you can email us. You can call the church. You can leave a message somehow connect to us. And we will make sure that we give you a call back. We thank each and every one of you for worshiping with us this morning. I thank God for your presence this morning. I thank God for you being here with us this morning. Amen. And God bless you. Now, God, may the grace of God. May the, may, may the grace of God, may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with you today, henceforth, and forevermore. And the people of God say, amen. Let the church say, amen. God bless each and every one.